Well, praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and get started in prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this word today. I pray that every word is Holy Spirit-led, filled with love, peace, humility, joy, and compassion. Father, in Jesus' name, I also cancel every single assignment from the enemy entering into this time. We welcome you here, Holy Spirit. Father, let there be no corrupt, irrelevant, or, or distractions coming forth. Let us all receive from you today, in Jesus' name, amen. I'm just going to get straight to it today. There are many people that, that have faith that's hindered. And I was one of those people that I I didn't know what it meant to walk in faith. And I didn't know how to walk in faith. And I also didn't know the outcomes of walking in faith. And so we're going to get into how you can overcome those hindrances that are keeping you from fully stepping out into the fullness of what God has for you. So we're going to start in uh, John and it's John chapter four, not John, first John, first John chapter four. La, 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 la. Okay, here we go. Ah, there we go. Okay, first John chapter four. Sometimes you know the pages get stuck and gotta know where you're going. He says here, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. And then it continues on. We love him because he first loved us. Okay, so the first part that we have to realize is that, one, there's no oops in the Bible. Two, God is love, and there's no fear in love. And if there's no fear in love and God is love, and, and it tells us here, that love casteth out fear. So God can cast out fear, which means if you have God in you, you say, well, God in me cast out this fear. So, um, or you can also say, God in me, don't, God up there, don't frustrate the plans of the God in me. And God in me, let's get rid of this, this, this fear that's been operating. God can cast out fear. And so we take the name and the authority in Jesus Christ, whatever fear is operating, remove it. And fear comes with torment or fear hath torment. So when I'm studying this, I'm thinking, well, if fear hath torment, most people that walk in fear are tormented. They're tormented of the truth. They're tormented by the fear. But either way, there's a level of torment all the time. It's like, it's like a rash that won't go away, and you think it goes away, but the symptom of itching is still there, and it's still operating. You're like, I thought this rash went away. And you're just like, I thought the rash went away. And, and, and it's like, what is going on? Well, because they're like a tag team. You get rid of the fear, and the torment will also leave. But if the torment is left, then there's symptoms. That, that is a symptom that fear is still existing. So, so we say, okay, well, the hindrances. We, we see here that God is love, that there's no fear in God. So if there's no fear in God, and there's something that's causing you to fear, it's not God. That took me, that, that messed with me for a very long time because I knew I could read English. Like I could read the words. I, I knew what the Bible read. I could hear it. So I knew what it said. But how did I apply it? Like that's why I was stumped. I, I was stumped for so many years because I wasn't quite certain how to, how, how God's word worked. And and so looking at these elements of how God's word works, it's like, well, huh. If God's word says that we can cast out fear, why am I walking in fear? Kind of like when people will tell you stress management. No, 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 no. Check this out. Why would I want to manage my stress? Why wouldn't I just want to get rid of it? Oh, well, stress is good. Anything that's not of God is not good. 
So the idea that they plan in your head that you got to align yourself with stress, when stress brings really nothing good into your life, why would I want to keep that which is not of God? So fear, what am I fearing that is not of God that needs to go? So I'm setting the stage here for you to understand that God, first of all, God is love. God created you to be an overcomer. God gave you so much more than you may realize, but the enemy has, has, has messed up our minds in a lot of ways. And when I started realizing, wow, uh, uh, I got some issues, then I was able to overcome and say, okay, no, wait a minute, this is what God's word says. If God's word's here and I'm operating over here, it's not God's word that needs to change. That's just stupid ideology that people don't want to change because they'd have to give up their sin and they don't want to. So instead of getting right with God, let's just change the word of God so we can stay defunct, dif dysfunctional and, and be whatever it is that we think we are, but we're so self-deceived we can't even function. So God's word is the standard. And thank God for God's word because our society is so bipolar, right? I mean, I mean, it's just ridiculous how this country in this own world is even operating. So, so we say, okay, well, we can cast out fear in the name of Jesus, right? So God sets up the standard here. There's no fear in love. So if I'm walking in love, there's no fear. I don't have to fear that, that you are an X, Y, Z, fill in the blank, right? So there's no fear. If we're fearing, where's the faith? Where's the love? Turn with me to the left for a moment to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 1, 7. 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. So, if we double back to, to where we just were in First John, God is, is love. There's no fear in God. God gave us a spirit of power, not a spirit of fear. So, if fear comes with torment, and, and we are not operating in, in, in love, but rather in fear, then we're not operating in the fullness of the Lord. We can't be, which means we're not going to be living in a sound mind, but in a double mind, as it tells us in James. And so when we begin to recognize the truth about this, we say, okay, well, God gave me the spirit, the, the spirit of power and of love because God is love and he gave us his spirit. So if his spirit is operating in you, you should be walking in love in all things because it is he that is great. He in you is greater than he that is in the world. So how could we not have faith? How could we not walking, be walking in the fullness of, of the faith? See, we already know that God's love. He gave you, he gave you the power. So that song, when they sing what, from the 80s and the 90s, I got the power. Well, yeah, because you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. So now we're walking in a different way, working on getting our identity back, which will come through faith to believe and receive and move in a different direction. So as he gave us a sound mind. Now, he gave you spirit of love, not spirit of fear, of love, and of a sound mind. So you have a sound mind. Here's what happens. You were given a sound mind by God, who God is love. There's no oops in the Bible. Go back. Every single thing that God created, each day God had tasks. He didn't, he didn't try to spend his energy today doing what was set for tomorrow. God appropriated his energy for each day to do what needed to be done, and then he took a rest. I mean, how great is that, right? So... So within every single thing that he gave you, he created you this way, this way, this way, this way, gave you this color of eyes, this color of hair, la, 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 like a whole little, little smorgasbord of, oh, this one, this one heart, this one, this one, this one, this one, all of these things. And then, but everyone got a sound mind, which means that, that anything that causes us to doubt or to waver or to walk in fear is an open doorway that will hinder our faith. You gotta shut that door. You have to shut the door. Because anything that causes you 
to not walk in faith is a hindrance. And saints, I'm going to be telling, honest with you, you don't have time to be interfering, entertaining, or, or playing any game with the enemy. You just don't. It's a waste of time. When you get in the realm and get it settled in your mind and here and here, one, that faith is spiritual, not mental, and that you, you settle it. This is the standard. This is it. There's nothing, 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 nothing that can ever come against me. I walk in the fullness and the authority of Christ. My faith does not waver. There's nothing that can open that door. You, you see, close for business. We are closed. That is the door to the enemy. Shut down. Closed. Not opening it. When you operate in that way, there's nothing he can do to you. You have to flee because where's he going to go? Like in Job, he was wandering to and fro. I'm just going to and fro. What's the twice? 325 and also in second in Job 2. So we say, okay, well, I need to shut the enemy out. I mean, if you've got a sound mind and you know how to read the book or hear the book, what's the issue? What really is the issue? Well, you know, this is coming up and that's coming up and this and what about that? What about that? Yeah, those are ploys from the enemy to create confusion. It's an open doorway. Did God really say? Isn't that what he did to Eve in the garden? Did God really say? Did God really say? Hmm. Did he? And then you start to doubt. Do you think God, you know, you've been waiting for how long? Oh, it's been two minutes you've been waiting on that prayer to be answered? Oh, you think God's really going to remember? Hmm. You better go out and get it on your own because, you know, God, God hasn't done what he said he would do. It's been three minutes. Tick tock, tick tock. And the enemy just jacks people up to no end. Never mind the, the, those that are not believers, but the believers I'm specifically speaking to. How easy. And, and, and it's like, what, what, is, what are the, the tenets of war? Know thyself and know thy enemy. It's so very simple. Know thyself and know thy enemy. Huh. When you understand the ploys of the enemy and you know this word because it tells us in Ephesians 6.10, be strong in the Lord. Well, it's when we start to get away from strength in him that we start to falter. And the enemy knows exactly where those weaknesses are. Turn with me a little bit more to the left to the book of Mark. It's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mark, Mark 11. Mark 11, 22. 11, 22. And Jesus, I'll give you a couple seconds to get there. And Jesus answering, saying unto them, have faith in God. Like, he just answers it right there. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed. Well, I'm a whosoever, aren't you a whosoever? I'm a whosoever. I'm a whosoever. Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and, and shall not doubt in his heart. See, faith is not mental, it's a heart condition. Lack of faith is a heart condition. Loving abortion, celebrating abortion, and, and pushing these, these, these terrible laws that celebrate abortion, and they lit up the buildings in New York, celebrating abortion, that is disgusting. It tells you where the heart, the heart, heart condition. Faith is a heart condition. But shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray. Oh, you're not praying? Oh. Whatever I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray. Believe and you receive them and ye shall have them. Well, I'm going to say something along these lines that it's common knowledge that Americans pray. American Christians on average, five minutes a day. You have not because you ask not. Maybe you have not because you don't pray. I am absolutely convinced that the only prayers that God does not answer are the prayers you never pray. Think about that for a moment. If your prayer is not being answered, are you praying? <laughs> and some of you, of course, will say, yes, I'm praying. Well, did you pray once and then you just left it and you prayed like back in Nam and you're like, well, God didn't want me to have that, so therefore I hate God. Which, which, you got to dig in, press in, push, 
pray until something happens. We push, you got to birth it out. Isaiah 66, 9. So, but he tells us, have faith in God. It is a command for believers. Have faith. It's incredible that so many people, not believers, can come to the table and believe that Jesus Christ will save them from the pit of hell and then not believe and not have enough faith that he can provide food or that he can provide a mortgage payment or a car note or anything else. It's absolutely incredible when we when we walk at that level of faith, Jesus Christ can save you from the pit of hell. Uh, he can also do the rest. Think about that for a moment. What happened in that in, in that amount of time? That we, think about when you first became a Christian. And if you haven't yet become a Christian, you know what? I encourage you to just give your life to Christ. There is nothing greater than a relationship with him. And you don't have to make it some big formal uh, celebration of a, of a prayer. It doesn't have to be ritualistic. Simply, whatever you're doing, whatever you, you just press pause. Just say, Jesus, uh, I need you. Will you be the center of my life? I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mess, and I can't do it alone. Lord, I'm sorry that I made all these mistakes, and I need you. And he'll be there, and your life will change. You see, for those of us that that, that crossed over and, and, and took that step, think about when you first became a believer think about oh my god it was so exciting and this I'm going to do this I'm going to do this and oh my god this is great the greatest thing ever I'm going to go on mission trips and I'm going to do this and there's there's this it's like it's like people just want to run around naked because they're so excited and then and then what happens where did it go where where did that zeal go where did that love for him go where did that faith go well you know just don't know if he's who he says he is didn't he save you from the pit of hell well, yeah, but that was 25 years ago. Why aren't you still out of that pit of hell? Hello, All right? So have faith in God is a command. He's telling us to do something. Have faith in God. Faith is a command. It is a command. He's telling us what to do. It is a command. Faith is a command. In the book of John, John 14, Fourteen twelve. This has been one question that I've been asking the Lord about for I don't know how many years, and one day I will have an answer. Fourteen twelve. Very verily I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Think about all the things that Jesus did. He says, you shall do what I did, and you shall do greater. Well, what did Jesus do? He laid hands on the sick. They got healed, performed miracles, cast out devils, got along with people, ministered to the hearts of men and women, but men, biblical language. Like, where are we doing that in the body of Christ? I'm not saying we're not. I'm not coming against any church, but I'm just asking overall. If you are in a church that does not believe in deliverance, does not believe in spiritual warfare, does not recognize Ephesians and casting out devils and not doing the works of what Jesus did, you need to get in another church. I mean, Jesus was in a deliverance ministry. Hello, he delivered all of us from the pit of hell. How could we not say that he's not in deliverance? That wouldn't even make sense, right? So if you're not in a church that is actively moving God's kingdom, you're in the wrong church and, and, and your life will begin to look like it. Okay. So we're walking in faith saying, okay, I'm going to be moving and doing things for God in a bigger way. And know that when you step out that yes, there's going to be a battle against you. This is why we got to get equipped to know who we are in Christ so we can walk in the fullness of faith. And I will tell you, I did not know squat when I came to the Lord. I did not know what a Christian was. I thought that they were just a bunch of homely looking folk that, that just had no fun. And, and I hated going to church because I hated all those stupid singles groups with all these homely looking people. And they're like, how are you? And I was like, get off me. But that was where I was. I couldn't stand it. I was like, this is just so weird. And, and they all had their hands in the air. And I just, I mean, I was young. And, and so I didn't know anything about faith. 
I didn't know what a relationship with the Lord was like. I did not know how to move mountains. I did not know how to pray. I mean, I, let's just be clear. I, I did not know anything. And and I still don't. I mean, when I think about all what I do know compared to what I don't know, um, there's a lot I, I don't know as much. I, I just, I'm ignorant. Let's just go with that. Not stupid, but ignorant. And and so I didn't know how to walk in faith. I didn't know how to walk in faith until I started doing it. Because you see, I could read the word, and the word is great. And I love it when people say, well, I'm walking in faith. But all of their 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 trust is in that bank account of that money that they've got. Or it's in their job that's not so steady. Or it's in that health care that isn't so free. What happens when it's gone? Where's your trust going to be then? How are you really going to walk it out when there's nothing? How are you going to walk it out when there's no income coming in and it's just you and God? And you don't have those credit cards anymore because you already maxed those out. What are you going to do then? Let me tell you something. I didn't know what I would do. I don't know. I haven't had, I don't have any debt. It took me a long time to get out of it. And I will tell you, there was no credit card backup. There was no parents for me to call. There was no, there was... No one. I was kicked out of my Bible study. They called, They sent me packing because I was moving in a new season. They didn't like it. So there I was. How do I walk in faith? For 10 months, how do I walk in faith? Lord, are you? is, is your word really real, real? Is your word really real? I knew the stuff that I had learned, but I didn't know how to fully apply it. And I was tested. I was tested, not tempted, but tested. Ten months, me alone with God. My income less than my rent. God, will you provide? Did I have bake sales? No. Did I run and, and beg? No, I didn't. And I still had prayer meetings every week with a bunch of people that didn't even know what was going on because I wasn't at that time in a position to share. And I'm telling you, when your faith is tested, it's standing on this word that will get you through it. Lord, your word says this. Lord, your word says this. Even, and I will tell you this, that when I stepped out in ministry, saints, that one of the hindrances is God going to provide. When I stepped out, and I love it when people call me a prosperity preacher because I'm like, well, yeah, God's word's prosperous. Why wouldn't I want to be? However, I will tell you this. I, I teach for five colleges. My income started dropping, contracts dropping, dropping, dropping. But my ministry bills were increased. There's nothing. God, it's me and you. Here we are again. I'm just going to have to believe and stand on your word. Because the minute that I doubt it is the minute that I need to step away. How can I? I should just quit. If I'm going to be, if I'm going to walk with no faith, I should quit and just call it a day. Because if, because otherwise, what would be the point? What, why would you walk out something you don't believe in? You can't. And so I remember those times where contract one, drop. Contract two, drop. Contract three, uh-oh. Hmm. Lord. And I will tell you that there was a gentleman that, that started calling the ministry line, started calling, sister, sister, I need you to call me. I need you to call me. I've got to get you money. I've got to get some money to you. I've got to get money to you. And, and it was enough to pay the bill that needed to be paid. It was enough. It always is. He will always provide. I didn't know how, but I took it to the Lord. Because you see, if I stood on trusting in man and man did not provide, I would be turning around and blaming God. And, it, and it's not man's problem. It's a situation between me and God and me, how little your faith. You see, walking in faith, one, is no joke, but it's a command, and I wanted to be obedient to the command. And so when we begin to realize that he tells us, whatever we ask for in his name, it so shall be done, when we pray, well, Lord, there's a need. There's nothing I can do, Lord. There's nothing that I can do. I need you. Are you going to show up? God's word for you. <laughs> for you. Hmm. Well, that was, that was some stuff. So it doesn't matter what the thing is. When you pray, he will provide. So what are some hindrances to our faith? What are the things that keep us operating in lesser than our faith? Well, let's turn to Exodus. We get into Exodus. And we begin to see a few things in Exodus. Exodus 34. Exodus 34, 14. For thou shalt worship no other God, 
for the Lord whose name is jealous. But you didn't know that? Huh? Is a jealous God. He is jealous for me. He's jealous. He is jealous for you. But you see, here's one of the hindrances to faith. The biggest hindrances to faith, and this is one that I walked in, and it goes something like this. Well, I got this. I know how to do this. I'm a, I'm a rainmaker. I'm a closer, baby. I'm a fixer. Yeah. Woo. Watch me. I can bring on the bacon and fry it in the pan. Hear me roar. Yeah. Yeah. It was really more like tears. Help me. We're going to be real, right? I mean, we think we're all, so, I'm all that in a bag of chips. Mm -hmm. Sit down. I shall worship no other God. Well, they went my days. They went my self-worship of how good I was and how smart I was. Oh, yes, Mensa. Oh, yes. Pass the test. La, la, la. But here was the thing is I was living in self-deception. Deceived. Do we trust in a system more than we do the God that we claim that we serve? I trust in that money system. Oh, I'm going to win it big. I'm going to win it big and roll the dice. Oh, I'm going to win the lottery. Right. Lord, help me win the lottery. Lord, really? How often do people do this? Lord, help me win. Lord, help me win. I want to be rich. Is there something not right with that? Like the only time that we pray was when we're in need of something, but yet, God is, God is supposed to what? Just be the ATM. We just stick the card in there and, and, and everything that we want comes out just because we think that, that, that that's all it is. But yet we don't even pray. Hindrance to faith. Self-deception. And then here's the other thing. Don't, don't let another hindrance to this is this. Worship no other God. How many other gods are competing for your time, for your worship? How many other people are projecting their ideologies upon you? If you're around someone who is not speaking this word over you to edify, uplift, and encourage you to expand God's kingdom and to live the fullness of your life, you need to get away from them. Why? Because if they're not on the side of God, they're on the side of the enemy. And anything that they project will cause you to doubt, hesitate, worry, have anxiety, fear, and they'll mess your mind up. And the minute that, that, that those thoughts take captive... Instead of you taking them captive, they take captive and they start taking over your territory of you, it's going to, it all goes downhill. Remove anyone in your life that is not on the side of God that you are not ministering to. There's a reason why the Bible tells us to, to know who we're hanging out with and to have nothing to do with them. Because then what are they going to bring into your life? It's not like they're going to bring fruit, right? Because they don't, what, what fruit? It's going to be dead. Let the dead bury their own. So our hindrances to Christ, deception, self-deception. I'm man-made. I did it. I'm good. Turn with me to James, all the way to the end of the book. Not quite all the way to the end, but almost to the end. James 1. James 1, 5 reads this, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, wavering or nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wind of the sea driven by the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he should receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And you've heard me say before, a double-minded man is really a double soul. And then that gets into fragmentation, bipolar schizophrenia, and, and a bunch of other things that, that people need to go through deliverance for healing of that. And it's not necessarily a demon, but a bunch of other things that need to take place. So when we go through this, though, when I realize that all of this stuff, when he gives us the command, uh, do not doubt, but ask in faith. Huh. Hindrance to faith is doubt. Doubt that God is who he says he is. Doubt of believing that God will deliver. Doubt that God can. Doubt that God will in the time that you want it to show up. Doubt that you're good enough for it. Um, what are the other things that you've doubted that have come in that have caused a waver in faith? Get rid of the doubt. Doubt is a seed for quitters. The minute there's a doubt, it will cause a hesitation that will cause will cause so many more things. The moment that that doubt will, you know, look at look at what he did to Eve. Look at what he did to Eve. He caused her to doubt, caused her to rationalize. 
all of these things that occurred when the enemy got into her mind really just messed her all up. I'm of the belief that that's where rationalization came in and indecision among women. When we start to think of the wavering of the behaviors of women a lot of times in, in many things, that the enemy just got in her head. Shut it out. Give it to him. You're a liar. I'm not doubting. God's word says this. This is what God's word says. And if you really need to know what God's word says, find all the words that God's word says. I am the salt of the earth. I am this. I am a child of God. And write those wherever you need to and put them all over your home. So that way, everywhere you go, you're seeing who God says you are and not believing with what the enemy says you aren't. Because he will always tell you, you're not good enough to be saved. Is your salvation, are you really saved? Is he really going to come and get you? And, 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 and you know, mm, does God really have that for you? Yes, he does. So sit down and get out of here. And get out of here. I don't even want you to sit down. You need to get out, enemy. Doubt. That's number two. Number three, turn with me to Isaiah. Isaiah 38. Isaiah 38, starting in verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years. And he continues on, I will deliver thee in this city out of the hand of the Assyria. I will defend the city. And there shall be a sign unto thee from the Lord that the Lord will do this thing that he has spoken. Hezekiah went before the Lord. If he didn't believe, he couldn't have gone before the Lord. His mind. The moment that we don't believe or that we operate in disbelief, doubt, or unbelief, God's word will be null and void. We can see the, the climate of our country right now. So many have rejected God's word. They mock God's word. They do it nightly on these night shows. God have mercy on these people's souls that they mock God. I mean, I mean, this, this is not even cool. And, and they're just, you know, Father, forgive them. For they, they, are, they know not what they do. These people are so ignorant and they don't even believe. But it's really that they reject, they reject it because if they believe it, they would have to change. And there's a fear of change. But within, within this, could he have asked if he didn't have faith? Hezekiah sought the Lord, and, and it was through the faith that he had that he asked. Would God have answered him if God didn't know the level of faith of what he was seeking? See, he tells him, according to your faith. Oh, according to your faith, you're healed. According to your faith, it so shall be done. What do you have faith to believe God for? See, many people say that they have faith until they don't. Oh, I have faith. Really? How long are you going to be walking out? what you believe in God for. I've had, had this conversation with several people over the past month that, that I want to know, what's the longest that you've ever walked in faith believing God for something? Some, you know, well, it's been a couple months, so it's been a couple weeks. Some, it's been years. I've been believing God for something for over a decade. Am I still believing? Yep. Because I'm too far in now. What am I going to say? Well, I don't believe God's going to provide. I mean, that would be, imagine walking that far, and then all of a sudden you just turn around, and then and then, and then then you'd look back, and there was what you were believing God for, and you're like, oh, my gosh, what have I done? And God's like, yeah, ye have little faith. Oh, my God, think about how tragic that would be, because I know what I've been walking through. Imagine if you did that same thing, that you've been believing God, and then all of a sudden the enemy starts twisting things. Well, you know, God's, you know. 
people of your age, mm -mm, oh, you know, that's really not going to happen. You know, God, that God's word isn't the same as it once was, except God's the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? So there's always a way to combat the enemy, and it's with this word. Even Jesus, even Jesus shut down the devil. Hello. Uh, it is written. It is written. Even Jesus knew it was written. So that's all we need to proclaim. It is written. It is written. I am a child of God. My Bible tells me. Fill in the blank. What does your Bible tell you? My Bible tells me. Hmm. Know the word. Be strong in the Lord. Ephesians 6.10. We've already talked about the double-mindedness, but the double-mindedness is number four. Double-mindedness. How does the enemy get in and what are the hindrances of faith? Double-mindedness. Causes people to waver. Causes them to doubt. And then they just... Well, you know, I kind of have faith to believe, but that was while I was sitting in the building from 10 to 2 on Sunday. But now that I'm out, well, you know, is God really going to la, 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 la. Oh, you have faith to believe until, until you test tested. But it's the testing of your faith brings the perseverance that will bring you through the victory and the trials that will move you to level, to level, to level in the Lord. And the last one, this one, I love this one. Matthew. Turn with me to Matthew. Because this was, this was... This was a doozy for me. Matthew 6. Thirty-one. Ah, it's so fitting for today. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewith all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father know that you need these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore take, or take therefore, no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto, unto the day of the evil thereof. Worry. Worry, 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 worry. I've said it before. I will say it again. If you want to worry, schedule it for 9 o'clock on Tuesday and go worry for an hour and be done with it. Just, just schedule it, go do it, and be done. So that way you can just cross it off your list. Say, you know what? I did it, and now I'm free to move on. Now, if you really want to be an all-in, then, then just spend the next the next hour being double-minded. And then if you really want to be in, why don't you just add some, some hesitation and some doubt and some anxiety? So that way you can just get it all done and move on. But you see, worry will cause a double-mindedness. It will cause a lack of faith. It will be a hindrance that will keep you where you're going. If you are in a battle time right now, in a complete time of testing, because you are believing God for some major things, just know this. The enemy will do every single thing that he can. The wagons will be circling. He will try to infiltrate your mind in every single angle. He will be push, putting like, like just like a squeeze where you can feel it on your arm. And at first it might be like a little bit of where you kind of feel it. And then it'll get going a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, where it's so much pressure and you just feel like you're going to burst. You've got to stay firm in God's word. You have got to stand firm and say, I'm going to believe. I am not going to doubt. I am not going to worry. God God's word says that he will provide. It doesn't matter what I look like. It doesn't matter what I'm wearing. It doesn't matter. And I will tell you, when I was walking this stuff out, saints, let me tell you, I had to go for a job and, and I didn't even have a car. I When I moved to Texas, I moved with three changes of clothes. Not any of them were appropriate to go anywhere. Let me just be clear. It was hot. I moved in August. I had a bathing suit. I mean, what can I say? It's just how it worked. However, there were things that I needed and I didn't know how I was going to have those things. And I, I mean, I, I had to keep going and it was like, oh my, and I worked in the fashion industry. So I came out of a fashion industry walking now in faith in all ignorance of, of all of this stuff. Oh, wait, like, oh my God, what am I going to wear? And I had no idea. And it was so mortifying. And I wore the same pair of pants for a job for a full college semester, all 15 weeks. I only had one pair of pants, five days a week, because I was so messed up and all this stuff that I didn't have a job. I walked out on faith, and, and I was worried. What are they going to think? So I had to make it work, and nothing was fitting right. It was like being in spiritual puberty, and it was awful. However, I will tell you this. There were so many things that grew through that, that, that my identity came, my strength came. I was strong in the Lord. I learned the word. I battled in. And, and it was like, okay, well, 
Now I'm kind of getting used to this. All right. And, and, and we're moving through this and, and the worry started to move when I started to see the, the, the awesomeness of God, when I started to see how awesome he is and how big he is and how much he loves me. And the things that I focused on for so long, that were all these things. I need this. I need this. I need this. And he's like, no, you need this. You need this. You need this. I'm like, well, what about this? What about this? He's like, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? What about this? And the things, the more that I saw him, the things over here began to become less and less and less and less and the stuff over here began to grow and grow and grow the lies that i received became became less and less and less and his truth became more and more and more and more and when i started walking in the fullness of his truth and started seeing wow he really is who he says he is wow i am who he says i am how about that i never knew that i never knew that he thought that great of me that he actually thought that i was delightful i had always been told well you know god bless david because he delighted in him what's your problem what's my bible teacher so much bondage and because God wasn't doing because God God wasn't doing the things in my life that he was doing in David's life that, it, that I was worthless and I would leave Bible study and come home and cry and repent because of what a worthless person that I was not walking in enough faith and then guess what the enemy would just use that yep yep he was routing me left right center oh yep you can't even do this look at you you're just like you're not even able to do squat yep months and then I started getting it. I was like, no, 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 no. My Bible tells me this. My Bible tells me that. My Bible tells me this. I am an overcomer. I didn't come this far to, to be defeated by, by a twerp. Get real. Neither did you. He made you for so much more. So how do you overcome these hindrances? First of all, you reject them. You rebuke them. You denounce them. You renounce them. You do not align anything that you've ever done that aligned yourself with the enemy. You got to cut that off. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that, uh, that and you, I repent first. I mean, I love repentance, but a lot of people, you know, that's like a bad word. It's like scale to me is a bad word. <laughs> I don't have those in my home. Mm -mm. But repent. Like most people, like, why would you do that? Because it's the greatest thing. It's a miracle. Like, it's, it's like the greatest thing ever. I repent, Father. That's the first thing I would start off with. For every seed of doubt that I've allowed to be sown in me. For every seed of anxiety, worry, double-mindedness that has taken root, I repent of it all. I, I, I cut it off. I remove it. I thank you for your forgiveness as I get rid of this stuff. I, I cut the ties and the agreements and the vows that I have made with the enemy that have caused me to believe more in his lies than you and your truth. This word will never fail you, ever. And I already had that conversation with God, what, 12 years ago. Lord, if this doesn't happen, I will go all over and tell people what a liar you are. You gave me the mouth and I can use it for you or for the enemy. And here I am. Because his word will never fail. And this hard head had to get it. And now there's no getting it out. I do not care what anybody says. This word is the word of God. I don't care how, how much of an anything you are. This word is true. I will stand on it. And that's where you need to get to. Because these times are changing. And they are changing rapidly. And they hate Christians. And they do not hide it. They don't hide it. Are you going to stand on this word? So anything that you believe that is not this word, you reject it. Get it out. Move it out and say, Lord, I'm believing you. Help me. Here's one of the things that I did. So I repented. I sought forgiveness. I kicked out every single lie that I had ever received, every vow, every curse that people put upon me, which there were a lot of them. I removed all that stuff. And some people say those, those and I went, no, 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 no. I, I can testify to that. Got rid of that. Then here was my prayer. So I did all that. Warfare, get rid of it all. Get rid of it all. It's kind of like spring, spring cleaning. Got rid of it all. Then here's... Here's what happened. Then I would start praying, Holy Spirit, cover me in your truth for all the days of the rest of my life. Why? Because if I only do it for today, I got to do it again tomorrow. So I want his truth to cover me. And I want, and so then I got, well, if I can pray for it to be done to, for all the days of my life, here's what I started praying, Father. Now, I'm going to back up one thing and tell you this. Faith is a consumable. What does that mean? You need it daily. You use it up. Each day is a new day. You need faith. And so when I pray for faith, I pray for faith to get through this day and the night. Why? Because God created the day and the night. If I only pray for the day and it comes to night, will I run out? I don't want to run out. I need it for the day and the night. Strength, energy, faith, favor, day, night. 
So I'm all prayed at. But then here's what I started praying for. Lord, I pray for faith that, that each day that I pray, it doubles from the previous day. So I'm, I'm increasing. So if I get an ounce today, then tomorrow I get two. The next day I get four. Then I get eight, 16, 32, 64, 108, da 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 128, la 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 So it doubles. I start praying these strategic prayers over myself to connect me to, to the Lord so that the enemy cannot ever enter in. Lord, I pray all the days of the rest of my life that I am in a covenant with you, that I'm always seeking you, that the enemy will never be able to rout me because I'm your daughter. I thank you for an increase in sensitivity to your Holy Spirit. I thank you for an increase in discernment. I thank you, Father, that I have the ability, the power, and the authority in all Jesus Christ to rout the enemy in his tracks, to shut him out, to move him from any operation. Father, I thank you for an identity that can only come from you. I thank you that there is no double-mindedness in my mind. No, 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 Father, I thank you that I am of sound mind, that I don't need medication to be sound mind, that there's no medication, there's only dedication, motivation to know you. I give you the praise and the glory, and Father, I thank you that there is nothing that will ever come against me because I am a child of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Sometimes you got to have your own revival, saints. you got to get on in there and have your own church because not many people are going to do it for you. And if you go to some buildings, they just might say, well, hi. No, no, no. You got to get going on this. You got to rout the enemy before he routes you. And I will tell you, when sometimes it would be hours when I was going through some major stuff. I didn't know what else to do because I had heard the prayers of some people. And they're like, well, we just, we just pray, Jesus, that you will be done. Yeah, you will be done that I am filled with faith. You will be done that there is nothing wrong with my mind. That you will be, you will be done that, they, that every form of worry, doubt, dread, anxiety is gone. That I walk in the power and the strength in my Lord Jesus Christ. That I am saved by the blood of the Lamb. That I will finish my assignment before I die. That I will know the secret places of, the, of, of God. That I will know the secret plans and I will have access to the hidden manna. Oh, yes. You see, see, when you start operating at another level, guess what happens? You feel this. I bet you can probably feel all the anointing coming on. Woo, right now. In the name of Jesus, you're like, woo, yeah, that's how we do it, saints. We gotta take that power back. Stop and stop getting in bed with the enemy. It was the movie Sleeping with the Enemy. Yeah, get the enemy out. Stop agreeing with him. Stop partying with him. Stop aligning and thinking what he's doing is cool, because it's not. He's a fool. He's a fool. You take back your your everything that came from him you take back god is love god gave you the power god gave you the strength god gave you the might god gave you the ability to crush the enemy in his tracks get to doing it you're going to see you live a whole other way the enemy's going to know when you wake up when that eye like starts even fluttering i'm even going to wake oh the enemy's going to be like whoosh yeah mm -hmm, that's how i do it i walk in i take authority i'm not uh -uh, no 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 i got the faith to believe those things i believe in god for those are coming to pass when bartimaeus was asked by jesus what do you want he said i want to see oh hey he knew he didn't say well 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 he wasn't like the dude that that jesus get up why are you laying there by the pool? Get up. Well, I met that guy once that that was just crippled up. But I said, Jesus can heal you. Dude didn't want to be healed because then he'd lose the attention he got. So he'd rather be a cripple than get up and walk. Hmm. How many of us have been living like that? Too crippled in our faith to get up and walk and kick the enemy out. I encourage you today to be seeking the Lord. I encourage you to take, have, just to, to wrap that in. Get out every form of disbelief, doubt, anxiety. Everything that's a hindrance to your faith, you have the power and the authority to move it out. And I pray that you do because your life, your future, and what God has for you depends on it. It doesn't matter your circumstances, how much money you have or don't have, how single, widowed you are, how married, happily, unhappily, how many kids you have. None of that matters. This is you and the Lord. This is your time to get with him, to press in, to give him the praise and the glory that you are a new creation in Christ, that there is the new wine in that new wineskin, that you are moving forward, taking that authority, and that God is right there with you, that you are saying, I thank you for your word, and here we go. We're getting on with it today. And you're going to see some results. And I know this because I walked through it for many years, not having a clue what I was doing. No clue. I just started praying. And I didn't even know how to pray. But I started praying. And I'm still standing. So there's something about it that must work. Because I won't. we don't even have time for me to tell you all of what I've been through. But I will tell you, 
I will tell you that his word works. When you work his word and you align yourself with him and you get the enemy out, there's nothing, nothing that can interfere with his plan. There's nothing that can interfere anyway except for your thinking. Get your mind aligned with here. Get yourself in agreement with you to get in agreement with God and what will happen in your life. You will be floored. It's the way it happens. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this word today. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for it. I thank you for in the faith that you've given us. I thank you, Father, for every brother and sister who are receiving this today. Lord, even those that might think that she's a little bit crazy. Father, that is perfectly fine because I know who I am in you. And I pray, Father, that they receive it. I pray, Father, that every single brother and sister is getting up, that they are getting up, 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 up to say, yes, I'm getting the enemy out. Yes, I can do all things with you who gave me the strength. And so, Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father, for new people coming to you. I thank you, Father, that my brothers and sisters are getting up, that you are calling forth your remnant to stand up and fight, that they understand why they're fighting and what they're fighting for. Father, I speak an increase over every single person who hears this message today, that they walk not in fear or timidity, that they just rout the enemy. Father, I thank you. I thank you that you gave us the authority to do just that. I thank you, Father, that you're showing up and showing out in the lives of every single person who hears this message today. Father, I thank you for the increase in measure of faith. And Father, I even ask for all of us the gift of faith that would bring us into a conversation with you as it is written in Romans. Father, I pray that whatever my brothers and sisters are going through, that they be strengthened in you, that they are strengthened right now in their spirit to know that you will get them through. Father, whatever they're going through, whatever lack, attack they're covering or they're trying to get through. Father, we know when there's, what is that saying, Lord? When there's an attack, you got our back. You always have our back, our front, our side. So we just give you the praise and the glory. Father, I thank you that my brothers and sisters are receiving this today. That they are walking not as who they once were, but who you called them to be. Let this word just drip over them. Let this word overflow them. Let this word, Father, just drape them, cover them, fulfill them today, Father. We pray for hearts turned toward you. And, Father, I'm standing here also on this very day praying for every woman who's pregnant, who's who's contemplating abortion. Father, we just remove by faith that, that assignment of murder against them. Let us not glorify murder, Father, for we know you hate the shedding of innocent blood. But, Father, let us walk in faith, believing that you have so many bigger plans for each one of us. And life is your plan. We know this from the book of Genesis. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters for newness, new relations, new anointing, new refreshing, new outlook, new perspectives, and new thoughts and focus, concentration, and hearing from you. Father, I thank you for answered prayers and testimonies to come forth. I give you the praise and the glory for all of these things that you've done in my life that I can testify to. And I thank you for all of these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you all. He is so good. You just, you have no idea. He's so good. And I know he's going to do miraculous things in your life. He will just let him do it. Just surrender it and let him do it. If you have a prayer request or if you have a testimony, go to julieblow.com or wherever you're watching this video, you can share that because I love hearing those, those things. If you have anything mean to say, I just pray that your heart turn toward God and that you just don't. <laughs> I mean, just, we're going to stand together one to another in the name of Jesus. We're not going to say anything negative toward about one another. We're going to be lifting up his name and doing a new thing and, and walking this out together. And, and, and I also invite you to join me every Thursday night. It's a kingdom call, but it's really church, church by phone at eight o'clock central standard time. And, and it is a message like this, but this is some good, it's a Holy Spirit led message. I just spit all over the place. Sorry about that. He, he always shows up and gives us something to help us grow. Just dial 214-586-0411. Come expecting to receive. And, and that's it. It's that simple. For more videos, you can also go to julieblow.com. And if we can serve you in any way, just let us know. God bless you. Have a great day. And I'll be here next time when God gives me another Holy Spirit-led message. Bye, everyone. It's a great day in the Lord. Love you all. Bye.